In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the electric field from a ring of charge. So to set up this problem, let's say that we have a ring of charge, which is centered about the origin, and we want to figure out what the electric field is at some point, some height h above the center of this ring of charge. And let's say that the total amount of charge on the ring is q, or plus q, because it's positive. So how do we start this problem? Well, the very first thing we should always do when we try to solve a problem like this is figure out, is there any symmetry? So is there any symmetry that will make our lives easier and mean we don't have to solve a complicated problem? We can instead solve a simple one. And in this case, yes, there definitely is some symmetry. So because this is a ring, it's symmetric about x and it's symmetric about y. And so what does that mean? Well, that means if I have, say, a little bit of charge here, I'll call this dq, then this generates an electric field that points in this direction. So it's got an x component and a z component. But every single point on that ring has an opposite point over here whose electric field, let's actually draw that in blue, um, whose electric field exactly cancels, the x components exactly cancel, and the z components add together. So, and I could make the same argument with a piece of charge over here and a piece of charge over here. And you can make the same argument all around the ring. So in, in all these cases, the x components and the y components will cancel and will only be left with the z component of the electric field. So this means that all we need to do is solve for EZ, which makes our problem three times easier. So instead of needing to solve for the X, Y, and Z components, we only need to solve for the Z component. And that's because we used symmetry. So how do we attack this now? Well, the next question is, can we use Gauss's law? So do we have enough symmetry to use Gauss's law? And in this case, no, we don't because we don't have any kind of infinite symmetry. So symmetry in all along x, symmetry all along y, this is a finite distribution and it's not a sphere. So it doesn't have any of the kinds of symmetry we could use for Gauss's law. And so this means that we're going to need to use integration. So we're going to need to find a bunch of little dqs and then figure out what the little the electric field due to those dqs are. And so let's do that on this ring. Let's start out with this thing that I've labeled over here already. Let's, let's say we, we care about this little piece of charge dq. Now, this is some distance away from the height. So I'll, I'll label h down here so that we have more room for stuff. And this little dq generates an electric field pointing in this direction. So I'll call this de. But we only care about the z component. So we only care about the component going in this direction, dez. So how do we get dez from de, or if you like, de as a vector? Well, we can use trigonometry. So if we call this angle theta, then dez is just de, which is the magnitude of the electric field due to my tiny little piece of charge, times cosine of theta. And we can actually figure out what cosine of theta is because we know that this distance is h, we know that this distance, I'll call this r, and we know this distance here, a. So we can figure out, we know that cosine theta, because this angle on the other side is also theta, cosine of theta is just the adjacent side, which is h, divided by the hypotenuse, which is r, or if we use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus h squared. And so we know cosine theta. So all we have left to figure out is de. And we can use just the equation for a point charge. So de is equal to k times our point charge q, which is here, d, we've called dq, divided by r squared. And we already said r was just or r squared is a squared plus h squared. And so we're almost done. All we have to do is plug this in here and plug this in here. And if we do that below, we get that dez is just equal to de, so k dq 
over a squared plus h squared times cosine theta, which is just h over the square root of a squared plus h squared. And we can simplify this a little bit. K h dq divided by a squared plus h squared to the three halves. So a again is the radius, h is the height that we're interested in, and k is Coulomb's constant. dq is the amount of charge. So now to figure out ez, all we need to do is add up all of our little electric fields. So we add up the electric field due to this point charge and also this point charge and this one and this one and this one all around the ring. So EZ, we just need to integrate DEZ. And so we need to integrate our this expression that we figured out. So K D K H D Q divided by a squared plus h squared to the three halves. Now, we can do a cute little thing because we're integrating over dq, or if you like, over this ring here. And as I go around the ring, this radius isn't changing, the height isn't changing, and k, which is Coulomb's constant, isn't changing. So we can actually pull ev almost everything out of this integral. So we end up with k times h over a squared plus h squared to the three halves. And then we're just integrating dq. And this is my absolute favorite kind of integral because this just means we're adding up all the little dqs and this is just q. And so we have our final answer, k times h times q divided by a squared plus h squared to the three halves. And that was sort of the easiest integral that we've ever done uh, because all we, we were able to take almost everything out of the integral because the electric field only depends on distance and this is a symmetric distribution, we end up with a very simple answer. Or I guess simple is uh, in the eye of the beholder here, but at least the integral was easy to do. And all this was enabled by using symmetry so symmetry made our lives much easier. And then we just added up all the little DEZs by figuring out what DEZ for a single DQ was equal to. And then we are able to solve this problem. And the ring of charge itself is actually a building block for other things. So for example, if I wanted to figure out a finite, the electric field of a finite cylindrical shell, I could split that up into a bunch of little rings. So a bunch of tiny little rings. And I know the electric field from a ring, so I can just add up a bunch of different rings. And so this is a composite structure that lets us do, or a, a simple structure that lets us add it and do much more complicated problems. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind the scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.